Mistletoe from our good fellow Toast Master and very welcome guests this evening. My name is David Villa Clark. You're going to get vocal variety because I've got a bit of sore throat anyway, but uh, I'm really going to try and push it out for you this evening. Now, my talk this evening is entitled Thelma, My Motivation. Now, how many people have seen the film Selma? Martin Luther King movie? And it's all to do with the 1965 walk from Selma to Montgomery. And Martin Luther King, a very great man, who was at the forefront of the civil rights movement for black people gaining the vote in America. Now, some of you may have heard of Martin Luther King, show <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about Martin Luther King, and it would have been easy for me to go up here and do the I have a dream speech. <coughs> but I'm going to talk about one of the unknown heroines <coughs> of those three marches that happened in 1965. It's a lady called Patty Novick, an unassuming, white, middle class American lady. Now, Patty had been on all three marches in 1965. She was in her early 20s and decided that she wanted to make a change in the world. Now, I'm blessed because I met Patty back in 2006 when she was doing a talk in Holborn. She was talking about making a change and a difference in the world. So when we talk about six degrees of separation, I'm two from Martin Luther King, how cool is that? <laughs> and you guys are now three. <laughs> but the great thing about Patty that really resonated with me was the fact that she said she wants to make a change against all odds, going against her family, going against her friends, to try and get black people to vote in 1965. Now, Patty also is Barack Obama's minister. I think you may have heard of that guy as well. So when she speaks, people listen. Now, this woman has real, real presence. And as Patty started to speak, you could hear a pin drop. And the room was hushed. 200 people in a hot room in July 2006. Now, Patty was talking specifically about her relationship with Martin and how he developed and mentored her to move on. She was leader of the Women's Brigade. And her role was quite simply to mobilize women to come on the marches to help get the vote. She just started to talk about that day called Bloody Sunday. The march was going well. She'd mobilized over 100 women with a crowd of over 600 people. The first march had got turned back, but the second march was the Bloody Sunday march. 600 people marching, singing, shouting, chatting merrily <coughs> that this was the time that they were going to break through into Dallas County and get the commissioner to listen to them. This time. They got to the Petrus Bridge, crossed into Dallas County, and was met by a cordon of police, state troopers, men as young as 21 years old who had been commissioned just that day to become state troopers. They were armed with batons. They had rocks. They had dogs. And their sole purpose was to stop these people from marching to get the vote. Something that's completely insane. When you think about the fact that there are people in this world who cannot eat food because they haven't got it, or can drink clean water, back then in 1965 we were worried about not even getting the vote. Insane. So as they crossed the bridge, they were hit with batons. Tear gas was set off. Stones were thrown. Patty recalls walking up to Martin and saying, the women are scared. We're getting here. Some people are hurt. What do we do? What can we do? At that point, Martin himself had literally got up and had blood coming from his head. And she recalls, he said, whatever happens, Patty, we've got to keep walking. <coughs> now she said, and it was really great, 
And she said it. She said, I knew he was going to say that before I even asked the question. There was a man whose faith was so strong that no matter what had been thrown at him, she knew he was going to say that. Well, the blessing in that march was it was televised. The whole world saw it in 1965. Probably not you guys, because you were all very young here. But the whole world saw it being televised. And that, in itself, allowed black people to get the vote on the third march. Then it's a very abridged version of Selma and the story that actually happens. But the reason why I tell this is because Patty's vision is to encourage people to go and make a difference in the world, to help other people, and start to think selflessly about what it is that we can do to make a difference. She certainly taught me, and a number of people who I feel blessed to be associated with off the back of that conversation. And again, that was a quick canter through, and there's not much more that I can say within seven minutes, but I'd love to tell you the full story. We currently live in a world where people get shot on the beach. What's that all about? I want to live in a world where we love one another and we have peace, justice, and people can eat and drink. Just want to leave you with two quotes. The first one is the Martin Luther King quote, which you may have heard, which is, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you've just got to keep moving. And there's this one quote that Patty, I think I wrote down back in 2006. And it's a conversation she had with her husband. And it goes, my husband had his own way of reminding me of what it takes to make a new world, which is not just love, but work. At the end of each day, he would ask me, Patty, where have your feet been today? Meaning, what have you actually done today to make a difference? Where have you been? Who have you seen? What have you helped build? It's a question I still ask myself each night. Question I'm asking of you. Thank you. Thank you.